management, management of the pet practice, and management of the pet clinic, and uh, everything about that. So uh, now today we will discuss the second part. Uh, the second part of the course includes uh, firstly that uh, how we diagnose uh, the different types of diseases by different types of uh, uh, methods. So I will discuss the different methods. So firstly, we have diagnostics by labs by lab test and by lab analysis. So uh, here we have the firstly, the first thing is CBC, which is known as complete blood count. Uh, whenever we have a patient, we need its complete blood count so that we can have a clear picture of the blood. So uh, when we have the clear picture of the blood, so we can decide easily that which type of disease that animal is suffering from and uh, how we can cure this uh, by uh, using different types of drugs. So uh, the basic parameters which, uh, uh, which are of uh, uh, important uh, uh, base, uh, the parameters are the HP, uh, which is the hemoglobin, the hemoglobin level, uh, it depends, uh, it vary uh, in different animals. And uh, the hemoglobin uh, level uh, is lower in the anemic condition, in the dehydrated conditions, uh, and in many type of viral diseases, it is, uh, it's decreased. And in many other conditions like tick fever, it's decreased. The second is MCV. Uh, and the third one is RBCs, uh, you know about this, and platelets, WBCs, PCV, the PECSEC volume. So uh, by these parameters, by the analysis of these parameters, we can decide that which type of uh, the disease the animal is suffering from and uh, what's the basic uh, a drug and what's the drug we can use in this specific kind of the disease. So uh, this is the diagnostics by lab, uh, by lab analysis. So the second uh, thing uh, in the lab analysis, which is very important, uh, I'm talking about the viral diseases and some of the viral, uh, some of the bacterial infections. Uh, we are not discussing about the parasitic infection. So RFT, uh, which means a renal functional test. So in which we check the bilirubin, uh, we check the creatinine level, we check the glucose level, we check the potassium level, we check the uh, protein level, we check the urea nitrogen. So uh, when, we, when we have the clear picture of these parameters, we can easily decide that either uh, the animal is uh, animal of the pet is suffering from any type of the kidney disease, any type of kidney failure, any chances of uh, the kidney failure or kidney disease, so we can easily prognose, we can easily diagnose the condition by the clear picture or RFT. So the next thing is LFT. LFT means that liver functional test. So in this, uh, this is a very important test, uh, specifically uh, in the tick fever uh, and uh, in the anemic condition. Uh, and uh, most of the cats uh, will have to do this test. Uh, the pet owner should have this test at regular basis. So it tells about uh, the liver function because liver is the most important organ which is affected uh, in cats uh, in any disease. Uh, most of the diseases of the cats in which they have the uh, disordered liver. So in LFT, we check the LA, uh, ALT, AST, ALP, albumin test, bilirubin test by the number of increase or decrease. Uh, these parameters, we can easily judge or we can easily analyze the condition of liver. Uh, beside this, we can also do the ultrasound, uh, ultrasound, uh, ultrasonography of uh, the liver. So, the next step is viral detection. So, uh, nowadays, uh, there are many kits, uh, many short-term kits, many uh, rapid test kits are available in the market for different types of the viral tests. So, uh, here I mentioned some, some of the diseases uh, uh, which have uh, some rapid test kits and some are uh, DNA based uh, which are uh, diagnosed by the uh, polymerase chain reaction uh, PCR which you know as uh, just like the, the, the test of COVID-19 uh, nowadays is going on. So uh, the first disease is CPV, the canine parvovirus. Uh, the second one is CTV. Uh, canine distemper virus, leptospirosis in dogs. Uh, it also occurs in uh, in the cats. 
<coughs> the rabies, rabies, we all know about this. Hepatitis, that definitely the inflammation of the liver. Parainfluenza, uh, we all know about this. FLV, feline leukopenia virus, and FCV, the feline calci virus. So uh, these are the virus uh, which uh, have uh, the basic uh, rapid test kits. So uh, we can use these kits. So uh, the parasitic control, parasitic control and the uh, protozoal, uh, uh, like yesterday, uh, someone asked me the question about the parasitic identification. So we have different type of kits. We have different types of methods by which we can detect the parasitic, uh, parasitic presence and the protozoal presence. The protozoal presence can be confirmed by the electron microscope. Uh, and uh, the parasitic uh, uh, is also judged by the electron microscope. Uh, it comes out after the centrifugation uh, of the fecal material. Uh, I'm talking about the parasitic, uh, the parasitic side. So when we are dealing with the parasitic side, so we will do the centrifugation test. And uh, when we have a protozoal side, then we, uh, we will do the centrifugation of the blood. So we can detect easily the blood parasites if there is any uh, presence of that. So uh, these, were, these are the uh, diagnostic tools which we were discussing. And uh, now we will discuss the next step, uh, major and common disease. I'm uh, here uh, in uh, today's topic, I will discuss some of the diseases so because uh, the, the uh, pet practice and the pet, uh, pets field is a very vast field. It's very broad field. So we can't discuss each and everything. After this session, I will ask you uh, uh, for uh, questioning. Uh, you have time. Uh, you have uh, uh, you have uh, much time to ask me any type of question related to any disease. If you will uh, uh, confine to uh, this topic or these diseases, that would be better for me. Uh, but if you have a question related to another disease, uh, like yesterday, uh, someone asked me about the paralysis of dogs. So uh, I will also discuss that. So uh, the first disease, uh, we will uh, divide it into uh, two categories, that diseases of dogs and the uh, uh, diseases of cats. So uh, in the dogs, uh, we firstly have the canine power virus. As you all know, uh, if you have ever been in touch with the pet practice ever, so either in your, uh, during your studies, uh, either uh, during your career, uh, you have faced the cases of parvovirus quite much and specifically in the Gulf, uh, it's much common. So canine parvovirus and canine parvo enteritis are the same things. CCV, uh, uh, CCV or CPV, uh, we, we differentiate it from this. So we are discussing about the canine parvovirus. So let's discuss about the symptoms. Uh, these are the basic symptoms of canine parvovirus, but are not limited to this. Uh, these can vary in different kind of uh, situations and uh, you can diagnose it easily by the experience. As you have seen many uh, parvo cases, uh, as much as you can see the uh, more parvo cases, the more experience you will get, the more idea that uh, uh, about this dog or uh, this dog having a parvovirus or not, you will get this uh, after a repeated uh, visuals of uh, uh, different parvovirus cases. So symptoms, uh, the most common symptom is bloody diarrhea. Uh, the diarrhea, loose motions, uh, loose tool, uh, loose spaces. So uh, blood, presence of blood in this, uh, uh, in his or her motion and vomiting. Uh, the third thing is stinky smell and pungent smell, the diarrhea or the vomit. Uh, it will be quite uh, smelly, have a quite bad odor, a very bad odor, uh, which you can't even uh, uh, smell. Uh, if you have a parvo patient at your clinic, you will judge when he will enter into your clinic that this one is a parvo patient. It will come after, uh, uh, after experience, after some experience, after looking at different types of the parvo cases. Uh, the thing is uh, anorexia, the next symptom, uh, anorexia, lack of appetite, lameness, the animal will be, will be uh, quite lethargic, quite weak, uh, not interested in different types of activities, 
uh, and the last but not the least fever. Uh, in some cases, uh, animal uh, may have a fever, may have a fever uh, 103 uh, Fahrenheit or 104 Fahrenheit and in some cases animal may have uh, uh, hypothermia, may be uh, hypothermic uh, like 99 Fahrenheit or 98 Fahrenheit. It could be. Uh, fever is not a confirmatory sign. Uh, in some cases, as per my experience, some animals don't have bloody diarrhea, but they have a smelly diarrhea. If there is a smell, just same like as a parvovirus, so you can diagnose it as a parvovirus. And vomiting, if vomiting is also smelly, then you can uh, decide it that it's a parvovirus. In some of the cases, animal is only vomiting, but no diarrhea. So uh, the smell can distinguish between these things. So uh, the one and uh, one another disease, uh, which is known as canine coronavirus, uh, CCB, uh, which have also the same symptom, but only one difference that is there is no smell in the diarrhea or vomit of the uh, corona patient on the coronavirus patient, the coronavirus dogs. There is no smell in that uh, in their diarrhea or in their vomit. So this is the basic difference which we can distinguish between the parvovirus and uh, the CCV. The confirmatory diagnosis can be done by the lab method that is rapid test kit which I explained earlier. So uh, let's move to the next step which is the treatment. Now come to the treatment that how we will treat uh, the specific uh, animal having this disease. So firstly we have uh, definitely, we have to use antibiotics uh, to prevent the SIRS, the secondary syndromes. We have to prevent it uh, because uh, if there is a viral infection and animal is suffering from a secondary bacterial infection, that would be more dangerous for that, for that animal, for that living organism, either it's human or it's uh, animal. So uh, by the use of uh, antibiotics, we can prevent the activity of the bacterial, the secondary bacterial infection. So uh, here, uh, which type of antibiotics we can use? We can use it, the third generation cephalosporin group, uh, uh, the most safest group, the most accurate group, and the most useful and uh, usable, and uh, uh, mostly the practitioners uh, uh, throughout the globe. Uh, I will talk about specifically in Pakistan, that in Pakistan, uh, the people mostly using uh, third generation cephalosporin group antibiotics. <coughs> uh, the next, uh, definitely, if the animal is having the vomit, then we will use the anti emetics, uh, diamine hydrate, uh, which is the most uh, effective, uh, uh, potent uh, anti emetic to prevent the vomitings. Anti helminthics, uh, which we use the, which we use for the for the diarrhea. Uh, just like uh, I, uh, I think um, in the Egypt, it, it's also available, uh, flagell, uh, the flagell syrup, flagell tablet. Uh, so we can use this one and also the flagell infusion. Uh, so the next thing is aggressive flood therapy. Uh, the flood therapy is very important uh, in the case of parvovirus. As for, I, I don't believe this uh, uh, on, the, on this phenomena that until you have a very critical patient, until you have a very uh, risky patient, uh, please don't go for the flood therapy. It's my personal opinion, but for the theoretical reasons, uh, aggressive flood therapy is required for all the parvovirus patients. Okay, examples of a parvovirus antibiotic, uh, like I said, the uh, cephalosporins, uh, but I don't know the exact uh, name of uh, the trade names of the drugs available. But I, uh, if I say it's a septrioxone sodium, uh, it's a basic drug, a basic antibiotic, basic third generation antibiotic. Uh, along with this, you can use the gentamicin, the first generation quinolones. Uh, you can use the novidate, ciprofloxacin, uh, levofloxacin, uh, tavanic. Uh, the tablet trade name is tavanic. It's very uh, useful uh, drug uh, in uh, related to antibiotic. And uh, beside this, we need supportive therapy. Definitely, when you have a feeling of uh, the pet's uh, stomach and abdomen, uh, so uh, 
uh, when you uh, palpate the stomach or abdomen, uh, you will feel that animal is uh, uh, getting confined, uh, getting restricted. So it will be, uh, you can say that uh, it's uh, a convulsions or spasm. So you, you will use the antispasmodic drugs, you will use the anticonvulsant drugs. So uh, this is a whole treatment. Uh, some of the theories are present that you cannot use oral medication or oral uh, feed during the parvovirus treatment. But I believe that uh, by the use of, it's my personal opinion, uh, not a theoretical opinion and not a, a research opinion. It's my personal opinion <coughs> that if you are using the oral medicine along with the blood therapy or injectable, it will be more beneficial. Like uh, you have uh, make you have made a drip. Uh, you have made a, a dextrose drip. Uh, if I can, uh, I don't know that you all are looking or not. Video is on or not? Not on. Okay, now, now on. So. Well, I haven't observed this one, uh, that uh, there is uh, any uh, air sac or is there any accumulation of air during the therapy uh, or during the parvo uh, incubation period. I haven't seen in my experience, maybe it's present, but uh, it's not observable or not uh, present as much as frequently. Uh, it's uh, present in some cases in which the parvo virus and ascites is present, that accumulation of the fluid in the abdominal region. So I hope you get the, uh, you get my point. So uh, I will again come to my point that uh, when, you, when you're using the fluid therapy, you will take a bottle of dextrose uh, in which you will add anti emetic in which you, uh, you will add the antibiotic, in which you will add the antispasmodic, in which we, in which will uh, you will add the liver tonic, uh, like hepamers. If you can get me the hepamers, uh, a liver tonic, a liver tonic. Uh, I forgot the generic name, but it's hepamers or hepacel. Uh, these are the brand names. So uh, by adding these, uh, you have to give the fluid therapy to the patient, and after that, you can use the oral and uh, oral uh, drugs that you can use the. And this one is the liver tonic we are using here. It's hepacet. So uh, it's a phenoxy 2 methyl 2 propionic acid. Uh, it's a better or uh, the best uh, liver tonic available uh, here uh, in Pakistan. I don't know about the other countries. So the use of oral uh, drugs along with the parental therapy. Uh, is very useful. Uh, it will give you many results. So, uh, beside this, the feeding schedule that when you have a parvo patient, uh, I know uh, it's uh, taking time, but it's very important and very uh, serious disease. So, uh, I want to discuss each and everything about that disease. So, uh, what's what? What would be the feeding schedule of uh, the sick animal, of the uh, viral infected animal. Uh, in the morning, the animal should have fresh yogurt. Uh, yogurt will provide a relief to the intestine, to the stomach, and it will uh, even uh, uh, provide a relief uh, to the complete GID. So uh, in the afternoon, uh, like in lunch, uh, the dog can use uh, chicken boneless, uh, a boiled chicken boneless uh, by not adding any other thing uh, which is uh, quite derogated and matched uh, at the chicken boneless. So uh, in the dinner <laughs> you can give the simple boiled chicken soup to the dog and uh, the diet should be the 25% <coughs> of the total diet he is or she is taking. Uh, suppose if he is taking one kg of chicken per day, uh, per time, per per feed, so you will give him 250 grams, like 25% of the total feed. So this should be the uh, method of uh, 
fitting uh, and uh, the treatment and oral and injectable treatment both uh, uh, will get this so if you have any question uh, about this disease uh, if you want to ask me now then i will uh, able to answer right now and if you want to ask me at the end then i will answer that uh, in the end. so uh, the next phase canine distemper <laughs> Canine distemper, uh, it's a, a complex of diseases. You can see, you can see that it's a complex of diseases that it, uh, it have uh, the central nervous system, CNS, uh, disorders, uh, symptoms, and uh, digestive abnormalities and res uh, respiratory abnormalities. The basic and the typical symptom of canine distemper is seizures, just right from the head. You will see the head is beating, just like the heartbeat of heart and you will see the dog is shivering from the mouth continuously shivering there will be a saliva a slight saliva coming out from the mouth of the dog uh, along with this the digestive abnormalities you will have you will face the uh, the stomach problems uh, similarly it could be vomiting it could be a diarrhea but not smelly and not bloody uh, similarly uh, the dog may have uh, Yeah, it's a good, uh, good question. As in, uh, as we are using anti helminths in power virus because they prevent the uh, the diarrhea, the uh, the loose motion uh, of the dog. Uh, this drug, this specific drug, because it's caused by the, the whenever there is a diarrhea, we mostly use the anti helminthic drugs, which ultimately stops the diarrhea. So that's why we are using anti helminthic drugs in the Parvovirus. So there is the presence of uh, uh, helminths or parasites available in the like uh, metronidazole, uh, which belongs to the family of albendazole. So uh, just similarly, I told you about the flagell that whenever we have a diarrhea, we have a loose motion, we will, uh, doctors uh, or uh, the paramedics or medics will recommend us the flagell, flagell tablet or flagell serum. I hope you get this point. Uh, so uh, I'm on the can 9 December. So I was telling you the respiratory abnormality, the respiratory abnormalities will involve the nasal discharge, uh, a frequent sneezing, uh, a frequent coughing and difficulty in the breathing. So this could be the respiratory abnormalities. And these three symptoms, three, uh, these three disorders will present uh, in the case of canine distemper. Most of them. So, let's come to uh, the treatment of the December. So, uh, here, if the animal is uh, uh, dehydrated, uh, let's start from the first point that what's, uh, what are the antibiotics we mostly use in the uh, canine December. So, the first choice of drug <laughs> which we use in the canine distemper uh, as far as my experience it's gentamicin and the second drug of choice is amoxicillin uh, this is these are these two drugs are the basic drugs and very very effective drugs in the case of uh, canine distemper second is anti seizure so uh, like i told you about in the symptom if animal is having the cns uh, disorders uh, just like having uh, uh, shivering or having the beating of the head, just like heart. Heart when when heart beats, it, it pumps. So head will pump. So uh, we 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 need to stop this beating, and we can stop this by using the anti seizures. So uh, anti seizure drugs we have here in Pakistan is Abivol. It's Valium. Uh, let me tell you the generic name of sodium valporate sodium valporate is the generic name of 
anti seizural drug which we use in uh, dogs in the case of canine distemper and the use of steroids <clears throat> so steroids uh, we, we are using steroids uh, for the uh, in the presence of uh, uh, the respiratory symptoms. So, uh, in the respiration sim uh, symptoms, we need to use the steroids, which is which could which could be uh, prednisolone. Prednisolone is the best choice in the case of uh, canine distemper. Next thing is supportive treatment. A supportive treatment is symptomatic treatment. You can say that if uh, the animal is suffering from <coughs> vomiting, so you will give him uh, uh, anti-emetic. Uh, if he, uh, he is having uh, diarrhea. Then you will give him anti-diarrheal or uh, anti-helminthics. Uh, and fluid therapy, if animal is dehydrated, so uh, to cover up this issue, you will need to give him uh, the fluid therapy as much as you can give and according to the requirement of the patient. So, next, uh, the most common as far as my concern, uh, I have observed this disease too much in the Gulf region and uh, in the Gulf region it's a very 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 common disease uh, almost uh, one out of every four dogs uh, have this disease so in this disease uh, the basic uh, symptoms are lameness anorexia anemia depression weight loss nosebleed in some cases these are not the exactly symptoms it could be variable and the one history will be common uh, one history uh, which will be told by uh, told by the owner to you uh, that animal having ticks uh, four days before one week before one month before uh, it this history will be told by the owner if animal is suffering from this one then uh, you have to go if owner can afford because uh, in most of the cases it depends on the affordability or uh, depends on the economy of the patient. Uh, you will uh, go for the exact parasitic or blood test. Uh, along with this, you will need to uh, check the CBC, uh, the complete blood count. Uh, so you can examine that uh, how much the blood level is uh, present or how much you need and how much extra ordinary things you need to do in the treatment of uh, that specific patient. So uh, these are the symptoms of the tick fever. I hope each and every one of you observe. Yeah, definitely. When there is a tick, it will produce different type of, a, uh, it will transfer uh, different parasites to the blood, which cause the blood, uh, uh, blood level uh, de degenerations, uh, different type of disorders of the blood. So, <clears throat> different type of uh, disorders and uh, by the by these disorders uh, definitely lameness will occur a lameness uh, we, I, I use the word lameness to lethargy to weakness that animal will not be more active he will be less active he will be lethargic he will be weak so there is no uh, any sign of lameness i i, I hope that uh, uh, you are taking it lameness as a, a straggling gait, like animal is straggling uh, during walk. No, uh, lameness means uh, less activeness in this symptom, uh, in these symptoms which I mentioned here. I hope you understand, you got my point. So, uh, here, uh, let's discuss about the treatment. The best, uh, okay, thank you. The best antibiotic and the first drug of choice here uh, for the treatment of uh, tick fever is doxycycline, uh, which is available widely in the market and uh, which affects the blood related or immune mediated diseases. Uh, as if, if you compare it to the third generation or second generation antibiotic, it's more powerful drug, the doxycycline. 
uh, and the second drug which we can use depending on the availability or depending on the condition of the animal is clindamycin uh, which in pakistan uh, it's available uh, by the brand name of uh, by the brand name of uh, delacin uh, in the capsule form so it's available in this treatment uh, so the symptomatic treatment symptomatic treatment similarly uh, will be the uh, if uh, if the animal is uh, having any symptom like fever uh, like lower fever like uh, diarrhea like uh, vomiting if animal is suffering from that uh, symptoms then we will treat them symptomatically supportive treatment as animal will be uh, uh, will be lamed will be lethargic so we need to give him the supportive therapy in the form of multivitamins in the form of the de- uh, in the form of glucose uh, flood therapy it includes in the supportive therapy and anti helminthics if if the animal is having uh, diarrhea and if uh, you see a specified other secondary uh, parasite in the blood then you will use the anti helminthic it will be confirmed by the uh, diagnostic test uh, by the lab analysis of uh, parasitic and protozoal test so the next and most important thing uh, which we face uh, mostly uh, in cats and dogs uh, it's skin infections so uh, skin is uh, you know the external barrier uh, for any animal for any pet so uh, what type of uh, infections we can face uh, we can face the fungal infections uh, you can see uh, if animal having a dryness or spotted dryness on the skin it's a very typical symptom i'm telling you in a very simple way i'm not telling you in a technical way it's very simple way uh, that you can diagnose that how it's a fungal infection or it's some other allergy so if there is a spot and it have a dryness over here uh, over the spot uh, just like dandruff Uh, in your ears it's similar uh, if if that type of thing is present on that spot that means it's a fungal infection by the use of ultraviolet rays you can also if you scan the ultraviolet rays on the specific area you will see the uh, the brighted pigments which shows or which assure you that this is the fungal infection so will you uh, so you will treat it accordingly by using the antifungal ointments and by using the antifungal uh, drugs uh, and if uh, uh, if the if it's um, acute in severity that uh, animal is having skin infection all over the body all over the body then you will use the drug if it's spotted areas then you will use the uh, antifungal soaps and antifungal creams in antifungal creams cotrimazole uh, and uh, ketamizole and uh, these two are the basic drugs and generalized uh, drugs uh, for the treatment of uh, fungal infections and uh, in the in soaps uh, the sulfur uh, which soap have a sulfur as an basic ingredient it's uh, very important and very useful in the fungal infection uh, some have uh, environmental allergies There are different types of and food related allergy you will diagnose it by different types of uh, test by different types of uh, history getting from your uh, from the owner of pet uh, ticks and flea flea ad- fad uh, flea additive allergy and the last and uh, not the least is domicodosis domicodosis is basically a complex of skin infection in which you have a mite infection a mange infection a ticks infection a bacterial infection and a fungal infection these five types of infections combined together on the skin of dog and which is known as domicodosis i hope you have heard about the tablet you can use that start when 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 there is a fungal infection you can start it the, uh, the sulfur is a basic drug to cure it if you're not using the sulfur uh, sulfur related uh, products uh, like soap then uh, this will be spread throughout the body within days within one or two days it will be spread all over
unfortunately, I have to find it on my gallery. Uh, unfortunately, let me see at the end of this lecture if I found some uh, some of pictures or videos. If I have, I have case, uh, pictures of different type of cases. If I found, I will show you. So, I was talking about the domico so, it's a combination of five different disease conditions, skin conditions, uh, in which uh, the animal is suffering from. So, uh, a basic or very common drug which is used for the ectoparasites, uh, in the specifically in the Gulf, as in Pakistan, it's quite expensive. Uh, which name is Brevecto. Brevecto is a tablet. Uh, uh, the company name I forgot. And uh, the second one is Nexgard. Uh, the, these two tablets uh, is more effective in this case. Along with this, you have to use some specified antibiotics. You have to use some such as dermatitis. Environmental allergies mean that if animal is scratching to the wall, uh, animal is scratching to the grass, so uh, uh, he or she can adopt. Yes, you can say. You can say it. It's a, it's a similar type. Environmental allergy that, that adopted from the uh, non-living uh, objects and uh, from the environment. It may be through the weather. It may be uh, through the uh, external environment, the climate. So uh, let's end the domicodosis. You can treat the domicodosis by... It's a different name. Uh, it's a different name of allergy. Acne is a different name of allergy. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, let's move. Okay. Uh, Antihistaminic, the, the basic drug is phenermine malleate. Phenarmine malleate, mepramine malleate. Why can they under here? It's counterfeit. Our process side go then. Or you counterfeit the under. And the beginning of the same side go. Sorry. But we were different. Anti histamine. Yeah, I got the question asked from the lady. Uh, mepramine malleate. It's a very good anti-allergen. Uh, chlorpheniramine malleate, uh, chlor uh, CPM, which we know as, and simple phenarmine malleate, and uh, uh, the um, the recently uh, generated antihistaminic drug is promethazine. Promethazine is the best drug uh, which we use uh, uh, nowadays. It's for uh, different type of allergies. Uh, it could be uh, it could be used in the skin allergies and it could be used in internal allergies just as sneezing normal coughing we can use it okay let's start uh, major and common diseases uh, of the cats now uh, the dog category is uh, is n now uh, we will start it from the cats in cats, uh, we have the most common disease, FLP. Uh, the symptom is uh, vomiting, diarrhea, most welcome. Vomiting, diarrhea, bloody discharge, anorexia, anemia, and fever. So, uh, like before, I said that these symptoms are not specified, but uh, as much as experience you will gain, you will get easily diagnosed the different type of diseases. So, the basic symptoms are vomiting, diarrhea, and uh, if there are, there are blood discharges, so you can <clears throat> uh, you can diagnose it as, a, an, as an FLP. So the basic symptom is uh, the vomiting and diarrhea. Uh, it's also known as the feline parvovirus. Uh, this disease is specifically known as also. So the symptoms of uh, canine parvovirus and feline parvovirus are almost same. The smell, uh, I will again tell you, the smell is the... <clears throat> basic differential uh, diagnostic tool uh, here in this disease. So the treatment will be similar uh, just as uh, in the CPV in the canine power virus that antibiotic and we use a similar antibiotic that is septoxone sodium 
and gentamicin uh, and amoxicillin also uh, we can use it here. Antiemetics if uh, animal is having uh, vomiting. Aggressive flood therapy. Aggressive flood therapy means uh, the animal required the flood therapy uh, more than usual uh, in normal treatment. So symptomatic treatment if uh, animal is suffering from any other symptom then you have to uh, use the symptomatic drugs and the other thing is and last thing is supportive therapy if animal is having lower temperature then we will use the multivitamins to provide the strength to provide the support as animal is lethargic in this in this condition definitely all the diseases of cats and dogs uh, they made the animal they made the pet lethargic too much weak not active not too much active not too much playful so it make uh, all the animals uh, lethargic, all the diseases almost. So we will use the supportive treatment in almost all the cases. Now, the feline calcium virus, as you all know, that feline calcium virus, uh, oral tissues, so the gums uh, got inflamed and uh, mucosa got inflamed, oral mucosa got inflamed. So uh, this is a typical symptom of uh, the Calcium virus, fever, nasal congestion, discharge from eyes and nose, anorexia, weight loss, respiratory distress. These are the typical symptoms, but not limited to these. Uh, in these cases, it could have a digestive problem, but in very rare cases, not too much cases, uh, just like one or two percent cases, uh, the animal is uh, animal having uh, digestive problems. Otherwise, it's all related to the oral and uh, respiratory symptoms. So, uh, by the feline calcium virus, uh, now come to the treatment. So, uh, we have we will use the antibiotic. The best antibiotic, uh, like in the case of canine distemper, in which uh, we have the, uh, which we have the antibiotic, which antibiotic we use? Uh, it's gentamicin, amoxicillin. It's gentamicin and amoxicillin, uh, which we use in the uh, respiratory problems. And uh, steroids, uh, like I said before, the dexamethasone and prednisolone is the most important. But in cats, dexamethasone is preferable. In dogs, prednisolone is preferable. And it gives a uh, much better result. And supportive treatment and symptomatic treatment, if you if feel any other symptom, if you feel any other uh, any other uh, symptom uh, you can use, uh, like uh, if, if animal is having uh, vomiting, if animal is having uh, diarrhea, if animal is suffering from the spasmodic movements, then we will use that uh, accordingly. If animal is having cough, if animal is having uh, sneezing, you will use the anti-allergens, anti-histaminic drugs as well. This will be included in the supportive therapy on the uh, symptomatic treatment. Uh, joint is uh, similar symptoms uh, like hepatitis. It have a paleness. Uh, the one of uh, one of the most important uh, uh, symptom of the joint is, uh, is that animal is having a yellowish skin, yellowish skin from head to toe, uh, from his uh, to his paw. Uh, everything will be converted into yellow color. So yellow color will be the more visible in the eye mucosa, like I uh, told you yesterday in the dog, when you check the eye mucosa. So uh, you will see the yellow color, uh, you will see the mucosa of the gums, it will be yellow in color. You will see the skin color, it will be yellow in color. You will see the paws, it will be yellow in color. Even the anal opening or uh, the vaginal opening, it will be also in the yellow in color. So this will show that the animal is suffering from the uh, joiners. So anorexia, dehydration, lethargy, lethargy, uh, weakness, and vomiting and unusual behavior. So these are the basic symptoms of jointus. Jointus and hepatitis are the same, uh, almost same diseases, and we treat them accordingly with the same. So the antibiotic which we mostly use in the hepatitis treatment in the cats is also uh, the uh, doxycycline, uh, which is the best and the most suitable uh, antibiotic for this treatment as the, in this disease liver uh, got unfunctional uh, got many type of disorders so we need to use the doxycycline as it's an uh, immune medicated so we use the doxycycline antibiotic as an antibiotic here and uh, symptomatic treatment like whatever the symptomatic treatment you see supportive treatment it's also required the supportive treatment
yeah definitely definitely but firstly i told you that if your uh, if your pets owner have affordability have economics then refer them firstly to do the lft and cbc after that you can uh, easily treat the animal but as in general in general if animal uh, is a rescue or a straight cat then uh, and you have to treat it free of cost then you will go uh, by symptomatic treatment and by generalized treatment but uh, theoretically it's very important to make diagnostic test before uh, judgment of uh, any disease no uh, it's not a, uh, but uh, as per as my experience that after 3 to 4 years cat may get this disease but uh, in very rare cases only 2% of the cases uh, which may get uh, this, uh, this disease uh, after the age of three months, after the age of two months or three months, they can get this disease. Oh, uh, it's not. And the flood therapy, the last one, uh, because uh, it caused quite uh, too much dehydration. <laughs> Most welcome. Uh, flood therapy, as I told you, the, the flood therapy uh, animal uh, in this condition of joiner is uh, quite lethargic and quite dehydrated. So we need the flood therapy and it's very important. So hepatitis is the uh, same and the treatment will be the same, almost same. Now, come to the skin infection. So basically, uh, skin infections like uh, in the dogs, uh, it's have uh, different type of skin infections, uh, food allergies, environmental allergies, alopecia, hair mites, abscesses, injuries, fungalitis. The fungal diseases is similar, uh, like I explained in the case of dogs, and uh, uh, the same. Uh, the treatment will be the same. Uh, we will use the antihistaminic drugs along with the antifungals. Uh, this is the different. And in some of the cases, we also use the steroidal drugs. Abscesses, uh, injury, uh, like a, a trauma, a rupture of the skin, and abscesses. So this is the most important thing, abscess. Uh, as compared to the dogs, the cats have more abscess uh, exposure. Uh, just similar, uh, this is the remote of uh, my TV, uh, my AC, my air conditioner. Uh, if the knob of uh, the, the corner of this remote hardly uh, uh, bite the uh, hardly uh, touch the cat any surface any skin area uh, it could be uh, ear it could be uh, it could be legs any skin area so after one day or two days it may cause abscess it may accumulate the abscess the first accumulation so in this case what we do uh, we do the uh, the best antibiotic for this one for the abscesses for the pus is gentamicin and amoxicillin. Amoxicillin is a first choice of drug and uh, gentamicin is a second choice of drug. So abscesses uh, will be dried out or will be ruptured out. There are two options. Either they will rupture, I will, they will, uh, either they will dry it out. So uh, uh, abscesses are the more common uh, skin uh, disorders, you can say, uh, skin most common skin disorders in cats. So, uh, whenever there is a swelling of the cat, try to use uh, amoxicillin and gentamicin. You can use them combined in a combination that use gentamicin uh, injectable and amoxicillin orally. Then you will get better results. If animal is uh, animal will cure in seven days by using one antibiotic, then by using these two antibiotics, animal will be cured in three days. And it's practically uh, experienced and uh, practically uh, resulted uh, uh, step or resulted treatment. So air mites uh, definitely for, for the air mites you have to uh, clean up the area. Uh, you have to clean up the eye, uh, ear uh, from all type of discharges. By this you can use specific anti mite uh, solution. Uh, there are different types of uh, anti mite solution available in the market. And it depends on the uh, country to country or it, it's very on the trade names 
and also you will use the antibiotic drops uh, which in Pakistan we use uh, uh, ciprofloxacin and uh, dexamethasone it's in combination Cipotic uh, D uh, it's a brand name uh, which have ciprofloxacin uh, dexamethasone and lignocaine so uh, you can use this uh, for the treatment of hair mites alopecia to be very honest uh, as per my experience uh, there is no treatment for alopecia uh, not even <laughs> it's available in the humans so it's also not available in the cats but uh, if owner is insisting you uh, to treat, then uh, firstly change the food of cat. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, regular uh, combing of the cat. Uh, after that, uh, uh, regular bath with a good shampoo, with a good cat shampoo. So by these, you can control the alopecia 40 to 50 percent, but not 100 percent. It's not controllable. Uh, once it happens, a hair fall uh, is going to start. Uh, then you can stop it. So uh, environmental allergies and food allergies are same. If there is allergy related to the food, then change the food of that specific pet. Uh, and uh, the best food for the cats uh, recommended uh, is uh, Royal Cannon uh, available. Uh, the Nutra Gold Taste of the Wild. These are the best food available in the market for the cat. Uh, mostly, uh, these foods uh, don't cause any type of the skin allergy. For the dogs, uh, Gemini uh, is a, a food and uh, Pedigree is the best food and uh, the Royal Canon, the best food uh, available in the international markets. Uh, these are the foods for, for dogs and cats uh, you can use and uh, you can recommend your uh, clients and make sure that whenever and make sure uh, whenever uh, you have a patient, I recommend him uh, for the vaccination. Vaccination is very important for the viral diseases. So uh, you need to uh, recommend uh, about the vaccination. So uh, next, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, the association, Dr. Rapalit, and all of the participants uh, for inviting me for such a great session and for a great lecture. Uh, I'm really thankful to all of you. And now, if there are any questions, you can ask me freely about any disease. I'm here, I'm available to answer. Any question? Thank you, Doctor. Okay, let me share uh, some picture if I have. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this was a typical case of uh, paralysis. Uh, came here uh, to my clinic. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, this dog uh, didn't survive and uh, died uh, right after two days because you can see the tongue uh, because his whole side and the back legs are completely paralyzed. Uh, I tried. Uh, to cover up him but unfortunately uh, she was not able to survive uh, we use uh, the calcium therapy 
we use the, the different type of uh, supportive treatments we use the different multivitamins we use the uh, neural drugs so uh, after that uh, result of these drugs uh, it was able to stand but unfortunately after two days uh, she found suddenly died uh, let me share you uh, her video I don't think so. Uh, and type of skin infection. Uh, this was a case uh, of uh, a cat having uh, a, a cat fight. After the cat fight, you can see the surrounding of the bone. It's yellowish. So it's mean it got infections and they reached me after five days so it got more worse so uh, it was recommended to them that uh, uh, go for the surgery uh, it need a surgery uh, intervention but unfortunately they can't afford the surgery cost so uh, they decided to treat this cat uh, by the help of different type of medications uh, they, ha they haven't uh, revisit yet but uh, i hope uh, the cat will be better now and the next thing is, uh, I'll just tell you about the. Uh, this was the case of uh, the parrot, uh, which striked on the fan, on the ceiling fan and which caused the rupture of the whole muscular layer inside and uh, the external uh, shear. So we use the cat gut suture uh, to uh, suture uh, 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 inside uh, abdominal cavity. And after that, uh, we close the skin by using the silk sutures. And, uh, show you the after suturing picture of this one. This one was the after surgery of this parent. He successfully he survived and uh, he will be back after eight days when we need to open up the switches. So uh, the next step. So this is the alopecia condition. But unfortunately, uh, like I told you, uh, I haven't uh, uh, I, I do it uh, do the treatment of this dog. But unfortunately, it's not recovered. This is a typical case of alopecia or spots. It's not a fungal case. So uh, let me look into some other pictures if I have. This was a paralyzed dog uh, which expired at our clinic after two days of treatment. So uh, there's a very abnormal discharge came out from his mouth, uh, from her mouth. So so uh, these are the pictures which i have for the, some cases if anyone have a question uh, you can ask me how can it this piece of toxicity come in yeah by use of the detoxifying uh, detoxifying agent and uh, by using the atropine sulfate atropine sulfate is a basic drug and basic antidote which we can use because after the toxicity you will see the hypersalivation excess of salivation coming out from the mouth of uh, the pet and uh, for the toxicity you would use uh, you will use the
the atropine sulfate after that you will use the antihistaminic drug uh, to prevent from any type of uh, uh, allergic, uh, allergic reaction and uh, yeah, you will use also the steroids so what was the problem uh, the cat we see uh, i show you one cat uh, it she's she was having uh, the abscess she was having a cat fight and after that uh, the wound is converted into the abscess uh, into the pus it, it got infectious so we uh, we offer them uh, to do the surgery of this patient but uh, uh, they are not willing to do the surgery as it cost them uh, i didn't get this question uh, a revolution uh, what's that mean in the case of air mind and what's the other question last one yes uh, it could be but history uh, shows that uh, this dog was injected a wrong injection at a wrong site the site of injection was wrong it was a plexus it was a nerve plexus it was not muscles so that's why after that the dog got paralyzed from the back side and after that uh, uh, she got uh, complete paralysis. uh th there variable symptoms but the typical symptom is uh, excess salivation the saliva is more excessively coming out right from the uh, mouth from the oral cavity uh, there will be a eye discharge and uh, if toxicity is at acute level is at high level or uh, it's uh, on uh, you can say that uh, non survival basis then the whole skin of the pet will be converted into blue color it will shade you blue bluish color most common is the prevent pregnancy in cat uh, i didn't get this question more how to prevent pregnancy yes we can prevent the pregnancy uh, the one method is that we don't prevent the pregnancy it's a natural process so uh, recommend the owner that go on for this uh, secondly uh, second procedure is a permanent procedure and in this procedure uh, you will sur uh, surgically remove the ovaries you will surgically remove the uterus which is known as ovarian hysterectomy or uh, in common uh, it's a space surgery or a neuter surgery so by surgical method you will permanently neuter and uh, there is another method which is known as the physiological method by this method you will use an injection and by that injection you will permanently neutralize the uh, cat uh, and dog the injection generic name is dimethyl progesterone uh, which is used uh, in our in human females uh, to prevent the pregnancy or to make a gap between the pregnancy but it have worse side effects it can cause the testicular cancer it will cause the prostate uh, tumors it will cause the pyometra it will cause the uterine tumors it cause the breast tumors so uh, it, it it's worse it have many 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 side effects but this is the temporary method these are the two ways are present the next question uh in the paralyzed dog what were the reasons of discharge came out and these discharges were the reasons of uh we can't say the confirm because the owner was not agree on the post mortem uh, report but as per my experience uh, it was the toxicity it was as the animal wasn't taking any uh, food by mouth so there were there 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 is many type of drugs we are uh, giving uh, through the iv line uh, so uh, she was surviving on the uh, drugs only so maybe uh it's the it's inside of her uh, which comes out 
in the form of this discharge, the brownish discharge. So it's uh, you can say that it's uh, it could be due to the toxicity of overloading drugs. Maybe it could. Anyone have any question? You can ask me freely uh, if any question. I'm here to answer. Today is the last session. Uh, after that, this course will be ended. And I hope uh, uh, everyone enjoyed this course and uh, learned many things in this course. Parallelism wasn't the direct reason for the death. I mean, in dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. You. I, I, I'm not saying that dog, the female dog, is died due to paralyzed condition. Definitely. Definitely, there was a toxicity. There was a poisoning of that. Uh, the most important thing uh, I just uh, got remembered. Uh, on that day, the dog also traveled for eight hours, and uh, she was having a quite high fever. That is, uh, I think, one zero six Fahrenheit. So, in the high fever, in the hypothermia, she traveled for eight hours from a different city to my hospital. And uh, when they came here, uh, the condition was worse, even they made the signatures. They made a signature for that, so it could be the reason. Uh, next. Yes, if it's proper, uh, if it's properly done by any good surgeon, then uh, they can have a puppy again. But if uh, they mistakenly tied the two uh, points of uterus together, then maybe uh, it could be difficulty after that. But in most of the cases, as far as my experience, it's my personal opinion, it's not a generalized opinion, that after C-section, there could be a difficulty there are chances of 70 to 60 to 70 percent that uh, uh, it may have problem in the pregnancy again in pregnancy once if it's uh, uh, she had a c section so me after to no no uh, diaphragmatic muscles uh, was not paralyzed because I checked that point, I checked that point uh, for that dog, but that wasn't the reason. Uh, the reason is only the toxicity or the poisoning and the stress she was taking for the, uh, after the travel of eight hours. Uh, I told you that the atropine sulfate, antihistaminic and the steroids, you can use this. And if, it's, uh, if you feel that the animal is having any secondary bacterial infection, then you can use the antibiotic and amoxicillin is the best antibiotic for that. Respiratory sounds are characterized symptoms. Uh, yeah, uh, but not respiratory signs. But neural signs, the neuroticism, the beating of the head, this is the basic uh, symptom uh, which differentiate it from parvovirus. And not in all the cases of canine distemper, there is a diarrhea. But in all cases of parvovirus, there is a diarrhea. This is another point. Any other question? Yes, the similarly, I told you that we differentiated that in distemper, the animal must have the neural signs. 
but in parvo cases there are no neural signs at all and uh, there are no respiratory signs are also present in the parvo virus so we can differentiate by these symptoms <coughs> Any other question? Always welcome. Uh, I think all are done. Uh, no one have a question. I will take I will your permission. And thank you so much, Dr. Khaled. Thank you so much for the association. Uh, provided me the platform uh, to share my knowledge to all of the participants and hope that everyone enjoyed. Uh, please make a review of this lecture so uh, we can, uh, and, uh, especially I can prepare uh, many other uh, uh, courses, different type of courses on different topics. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm, yeah, I'm willing to make the course uh, if I got the good reviews <laughs> over, uh, over this. So thank you so much and take care. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Fiam Manila. Thank you, Fiam Manila. Hadanda Yusuf, sir.